Well, it's the end of an era for Montana State Athletics. After 37 years with the program, legendary track and field head coach Dale Kennedy has announced his retirement. And coach, as you reflect on all of this, wh where's your mind today? Well, it's really mixed. I mean, your, your flashback on all the things that have happened over 37 years, what's ahead at this point, uh, those two things are kind of conflicting somewhat. Uh, but more than anything, I just have a lot of fond memories of, of my time here at Montana State. In your time here, how have you seen the Bobcat Athletic Department and the track and field program grow and evolve? Boy, you know, a lot has happened in those 37 years from basically when I first came here, there was no funding for men's track and field. Women's track and field and women's athletics were just beginning and they were funded and we were separate athletic departments at that time. And that was a kind of a tense moment because Rob Stark, who was our head men's coach and I had to work collaboratively together. We share the same facility. We're training at the same time. We're trying to schedule similar meets going to the same place at the same time. And that was a challenge because they were hardly funded at all. And we were funded significantly better at that point. We struggled through those years. Uh, I've watched a lot of ebb and flow uh, over the years, at this present time, in the last 10 years, we've had the greatest financial support that we've ever had and has allowed our program, I think, to really have an opportunity to be competitive at the big sky level, if not beyond. When you took the job here in July of 1981, did you anticipate this would be your final stop Boy, in your career? You know, we came here, and when I left Spokane Community College, and we came into Bozeman, and and we weren't really thinking about what a great place this was to live, but after two years, my wife and I looked at each other, you know what, this is really a great place to live. We'd, we would never leave here until they run us out. And my good fortune was they never ran us out. You know, we got to stay and raise our kids here. And, and uh, my wife worked in, in mechanical engineering and had a great position over there where she had a great relationship with faculty and with students, it was a perfect kind of a position for her so we really grew together here in this community and and raised our kids here for at least half of their lives and it's a great place to live. Retirement is never a decision that comes easy. You take into account a lot of different things. When did you start to consider this decision? You know two years ago it was at, at 48 total years of coaching between the high school and community college in Montana State and I Terry and I were talking about it about retirement I said you know if I did two more years, it'd be 50. And I know it's just a number, but it does have some meaning that I was able to stay in an occupation that I love and something I really enjoyed doing for 50 years. Uh, it's, it's just been a great experience for me. It would take a good long while to go through your entire resume and list of accomplishments, but four team conference championships, 200 individual conference championships, 25 All-Americans and more than 40 kids competed in the NCAA championships. As you look back on that, and that's just in track and field, that doesn't count your cross-country resume as well. As you look back on all of this, to what do you attribute your success in coaching? Boy, you know, having a great staff. Uh, Mike Kerrigan, who just retired a year ago, just absolutely a phenomenal job with our throwing events. And I, he was on my staff from the get-go as a volunteer at first and then became a, a paid assistant over time. Tom Idle has been with me for 20 years and the guy is legendary with the jump, jumping events. And then uh, Lyle Weiss has joined me here uh, probably 10, 12 years ago, assisted me with, uh, with the distance running and uh, sprints and hurdles and he and I co-coach that together. I just recently turned that over to him four years ago. I think the magic in it really is a coaching staff. Each of these event coaches actually are completely responsible for the development of the kids in their event group. Uh, the other thing is just a great support from administration, faculty across campus who've really reached out for the development of our kids and their academic excellence. And we have a great record there, as you're probably aware of that. Uh, they've been instrumental in that. Uh, Jamie Rizzuto, our academic uh, athletic academic uh, advisor has been absolutely off the charts and steering our kids in the right direction and making sure that they had the help that they needed and the guidance they needed on the academic end of it. But I would say just great support. Uh, another group that's been instrumental in the development of our program, particularly the last 20 years, is the Bobcat Track and Field Association. 
they have been the fundraisers for all the projects that have happened here. The indoor track and field complex was just renovated, as you guys know, here three or four years ago. This will be the third time that they've renovated the outdoor track, put seating in there, the Bobcat Plaza, the women's locker room that they funded that uh, changeover, which was desperately needed. Uh, but not only their financial support, but just the fact that they're so behind our kids and so passionate about what our young people are doing. You coach both the Montana State's national champions who in the individual disciplines. Shannon Butler won the 10,000 meter in the outdoor, the 5,000 meter in the indoor. Ellie Rudy, a back-to-back -back pole vault national champion. That's certainly a wonderful accomplishment for those student athletes, but for you as a coach, what are those kinds of accomplishments? Well, mean? they're really fun to watch, but honestly, I've really got to share that. You know, uh, Shannon Butler, Rob Stark was our head men's track and field coach when Shannon Butler's career was unfolding here, and Tom Ronig actually coached Shannon Butler. Uh, Tom Idle coached Ellie to those two national championships, and I wouldn't say I was just along for the ride. I was a great supporter for it, and it's the overall program that probably has an environment that allows those kids to thrive in this situation. Uh, I've said again and again to anybody who will listen that any place is a launching pad for success, and certainly Montana State is a place where any kid could shoot to the moon. You look at Lance Deal, the silver medalist in the hammer throw for us at Atlanta. He's still the world record holder in the weight throw, Montana State. You know, we've had our share of kids that have done some really outstanding things uh, through their careers. I want to ask you about a couple of teams in particular also. The 2002 cross country team that finished 11th in the nation. How special was that group? That, that will be a, a memory probably that will last for a long time. That was a really special group of young men. Uh, mostly they were Montana kids. Uh, Greg Gibson was from, from uh, Woodland, uh, Washington. The other kids were all Montana kids. They grew up here. We took a group of kids and we started with them as freshmen. And it, albeit it did take us all the way to the fourth and fifth year for those kids to, to get to that level, but they really, it was all about development. It was about a spirit of camaraderie, a group of guys that thought together we could do this if everybody would commit. But it wouldn't be just a commit over a year. It would be a, a four-year commitment to make that happen. And uh, that will be a memory that is that will long live with me. It's kind of interesting. We went to the Mountain Region Championships to qualify. First, we won a conference championship in an upset fashion over Weba State in Northern Arizona at Pocatello. It had snowed, it was really a hilly course and nobody wanted to run that course but Montana State. Everybody was mad because we were on this really tough demanding course and we knew what the course was gonna be. So we really prepared for that and we actually, Weber State and, and Northern Arizona were ranked ahead of us. And we actually earned points to get in the national championships by beating Northern Arizona and Weber State at our conference championship. I mean, that's just one of those really unusual situations. Then two weeks later, we got to the NCAA Mountain Region Championship and we finished fifth and we thought when the results came out that we had had enough wins over automatic qualifiers and, and as it unfolded we did and we got into the national championships. What's really amazing about that, there's 31 teams in that championship. We should have never finished 11th on paper. That should have never happened. We beat all the Mountain Region teams there and it was really a lot of people were pretty excited. My God. Montana State really had a great meet. We really did put together a great meet at that national championship. And I've often said, you know, it'd be like our basketball team getting into the Sweet 16. You know, you don't see it like that because, you know, not that many people are cross country fans. <laughs> you have to be a purist to, <laughs> to know what's going on there. But it was, it was significant and those kids will long remember that. The other team I want to ask you about, it's one of my favorite stories <clears throat> that I've heard in my time here the 2001 Women's Indoor Track and Field Championship. That has become something of a legendary tale around here. The accomplishment of winning the meet in and of itself is a great feat, but what they hung from the rafters before the meet began over in Worthington Arena is what takes this story to the next level. I want to tell you, you know who hung that? Jennifer Allen. She put the sign up there. And I didn't even notice that sign. And what did it say? Let them know what it said. This place is reserved for MSU track and women's track and field or something close to that. But it was a reserved spot. She had the 
leadership, ability, and the passion, the enthusiasm. She had great teammates too. It was a group of them. But Jim was the one that, that got it up on the up on the rafter there. And, and now there's one there that really says that, <laughs> you know, and it, it was awesome. I mean, they were a great group of kids and it was really special. And it's so special to have Jen Allen be on our staff now. It's just one of those things that's happened with Lyle Weiss being a Montana State All-America here, being on the staff, Jen being legendary on the staff. I think it just has developed a culture uh, of Montana State track and field that just has gone on and on because the coaches really have bought into it. The student athletes have bought into that culture and, and I just call it blue collar work ethic, roll up your sleeves and let's go to work. So you mentioned your wife, Terry, a little bit earlier. So what now? You and she are going to have some time together in retirement. What are your plans for retirement? Well, you know, one thing, I, I'm hoping to volunteer coach either one of the two high schools or maybe perhaps here at Montana State, depending on who gets this position. Uh, Terry's really in agreement with that. She would just like to not have those 10 to 12 hour days, six days a week. And, that, and that's, you know, anybody that's in coaching knows that and I've got so much to be grateful for for Terry especially and Kim and Pat you know who allowed their dad to be able to do this uh, they were short changed for sure uh, but again you have to have a support system like that uh, I think my wife really bought into it big time she coached at the high school for 12 years down there and then she really understood it and it was probably an NCAA rule violation but those high school kids lived in our house I mean they were there all the time uh, and then she really began to understand she had a great career herself and that led me into coaching track and field her coach Ken Foreman was our multiple time a US team coach for international competitions three times with our Olympic team and he was kind of my idol and my mentor in this whole thing and still is to this day. He and I have done camps forever in the summertime, uh, clear back to 50 years ago when I first started coaching. And, and uh, I certainly owe an awful lot to him and to my family. Well, a long and storied career has come to an end. It's a chapter in Bobcat Athletics that will be unmatched. Dale Kennedy announcing his retirement. Coach, congratulations. Jay, thanks so much, yeah.